Good day to all my students. Today we're going to talk about crystallization process. What is crystallization process? First, we talk about charges. What is a charge? A charge is a security for the company's borrowing. Because from time to time, companies require funds for their capital expenditure. They can get it internally. How? Is from the shares. The shares allotted to the shareholders. When the shareholders pay for that shares, then the money will be used by the company as a capex. But however, sometimes this is not enough. So the bank have to borrow external from the bank or any other financial institutions. But when the bank borrowed the money to the company, they would require some sort of security to secure the loan given to the company in case the company are able to pay for the money or for the borrowing. So, we talk about borrowing. There are two types of security. One is a debenture, another one is a charge. A debenture basically a piece of paper evidencing the debt of that company to the bank. It can be as simple as a single sheet of paper saying that I owe you and it's sufficient but however a bank would require or usually a bank would have a very complicated and complex set of debenture agreement okay then we go for the charge 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 is a can be demarcated into two floating and fixed charge fixed charge usually covers type of asset which is fixed, like land, house, or any other fixed charge, any other fixed asset. And the company unable to deal with the, with the land as and when they please. When they want to sell the, the asset, yes they can, but they need to get the consent from the bank. And it need to be registered with the Surah Jaya Sharkat Malaysia within 30 days. These are stated in section 108 subsection 1 of the Companies Act 1965. Then we have a floating charge. Unlike the fixed charge, a floating charge covers all current and future asset. Well, come to think of it, you have this um, asset like stock and free raw materials that, that you need to use in your supply chain or manufacturing process. So it is very unthinkable that you need to get a consent from the bank as and when you want to deal with the asset. So, the floating charge gives some freedom to the company to deal with the asset as and when they please. However, in the case of Zeno Limited against prefabricated construction, 1967 to MLG 104, it defines floating charge as equitable charge and it remains dormant until occurrence of event. Then you may want to ask me, what is this event? Well, event has been defined by the case as default in the repayment of the borrowing. Then upon the default, then floating charge will then turn into a, a fixed charge. Let me draw you an analogy. Okay. But before that, you may want to, you may want to forgive for my drawing. It may not be good, but I think it's sufficient to explain the matter. So, when you think about floating charge, think about the clouds which floating in the sky. Alright? It's a floating charge. Floating. Floating. I hope I got this spelling right. Floating. Then we have a fixed charge. As we all know, fixed charge is like a fixed asset, like lead. Right. This is a fixed charge. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. A fixed charge. Alright, 
Then you have a fluid discharge and you have discharge. And what is this crystallization? In the case of Zeno, this is a point before a repayment. Then a floating charge becomes a fixed charge by way of a crystallization process. So a point before of a floating charge, you have a crystallization. Then it becomes a fixed charge. So a point before the floating charge will become a crystal and it will fall to the ground like this. Then upon reaching this, it becomes a fixed charge. Hence, all other features of fixed charge now applicable to a floating charge. Well, I hope this analogy will make a clear picture of what is a crystallization process. And if you've got any questions, you can ask me for my further explanations. Until then, goodbye.